Like kind of the theme of my work has been uh, mainly about identity. I've been kind of obsessed with the idea of like what is your identity? How do you portray it? And of course, like your face, of course, is like your most identifying feature. Mm -hmm. That's what they blur out in videos whenever you're wanting to be anonymous. And that's why, yeah. you know, we take portraits. We take pictures of our face to show ourselves. Yeah. And what kind of started me on that was um, Ernest Bellick's photography. He is a... He's a 19th century photographer who was based out of New Orleans. And after he died, they found a whole box of like negative, um, negative plate photography that he had been, that he had made and he'd made it in complete secret. So no one knew that this even existed until after he died, but it was all these photographs of prostitutes and it was prostitutes from the Storyville district, from the red light district in New Orleans. And so like, he's one of the only people to historically document like the red light district but also one big characteristic about his photographs is the fact that the faces of the women and a lot of them were scratched out and um like professionals have looked at it in like the way that the negative plate was made they could tell that he was the one who scratched him out like during the process mm -hmm. And so that's something that's always really fascinated me about his work. It's kind of like the ambiguity about it. Like he's not alive, so we can't ask him. We don't know why yeah. he scratched those faces out. Yeah. And so like, I've kind of been thinking to myself, like did he do it to like make it easier to kind of like sexualize these women? Mm -hmm. Like it's easier to objectify a body whenever there's not, not a face. face. Yeah, when you ever don't have a face staring back at you. Um, but then also, he could have been uh, like trying to save their, trying to like save their identity, like mm -hmm. make them anonymous. Yeah. And so I don't know. There's there's so many different ways that it can be thought of, and that just really fascinated me, and it really resonated with me. And so I've been creating um, ever since, like kind of thinking about it, kind of thinking about uh, like the female identity. Mm -hmm and like why, how do we yeah. portray ourselves. So that kind of goes into my, my the 50 paintings that I created. Um, they're, they're just 50 faces and they're 50 mouths. So it like looks a little bit more forward on the idea of the face and the identifying features. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, what about the face is the most identifying? And of course, like the two things that you think of are the eyes and the mouth. Yeah. But also with the mouth, like that's what we communicate with. Mm -hmm. Like we communicate with eyes a lot as well, but the mouth is what. There's so many different variations that you can create. Yeah, you can tell a lot. And that's one thing that I really liked about these photographs was like there was a lot of people smiling, but then I would tell them like, okay, just make a weird face. Yeah. And that, I feel like that tells a lot about the person. Mm -hmm. So I guess like with my work, like mm -hmm. as, as a whole, I kind of want people to to question like how they portray themselves. Yeah. Like what what what's special about them mm -hmm. that they want to that they feel like it's an identifying feature. Yeah. And and we do have, I mean, different masks that we put on for different people. As much as like we like to think we don't, we do. Yeah. We absolutely. definitely do, yeah. And I think um, I think that's interesting to you. Yeah. This is kind of like a raw, definitely mask. Yeah. I make this analogy every time I talk about my art, mm -hmm. but I want the viewer to feel whenever they see my image, I want it to feel like they're eating an entire tub of frosting. Yeah. I think I get that. Fine. Like so sweet and yeah, it's just overindulgent and mm -hmm. gluttonous and kind of makes you sick to your stomach. I love gluttony. But you still <laughs> like, I love what's it. Too. Hedonistic when like you love to sin. Is that what it's called? Is that what it is? I called? think it is. I but think that's so. Totally like. But yeah, I get totally that. Thing. I get that. I do. Um, because art is very much. I mean, we're indulging mm -hmm. in the senses. So I think I think that makes I a want, lot of sense. Yeah, I totally want to play on that over. Um, so where do you kind of like see your work going from here? 
Of course, like, I would love to see myself in some type of gallery or showing, mm -hmm. like, as much as I can. I don't want to, I don't want to focus on my art as an income. I don't mm -hmm. want to depend on my art for an income, mainly because I want to be able to keep creating the way that What I'm you creating. want to do, yeah. And, like, with a lot of my work, um, I don't really see someone wanting to, like, make their living room piece, like, my artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but would you want to make your art a living, you know, like couch art? Right, like, like I don't... Like that has a time and a place, but like, not for me. Yeah, I don't, and I don't want to like mm. depend on that. I don't, because I know for a fact if I depend on my mm. art for an income, I'm going to change it to the people. I'm going to change my art. Oh, definitely. Depending on like what they're buying. 